Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, I got a haircut. Now I look more like Lewis from Meet the Robinsons than I ever have before. So a couple weeks ago, I watched the movie Palm Springs, which is a Groundhog Day type movie. Uh, and it was very relatable to see someone go through the same day over and over and over again and have nothing ever change. And I know a bunch of people have been doing something similar, but instead of watching Groundhog Day movies, they've been watching pandemic movies. As I was looking through those, I stumbled into what may be the most foul movie ever created. It's called Birdemic, subtitled Shock and Terror. And it's truly one of the most indescribable pieces of media I've ever seen. So now I will probably make my longest video talking about it. So the movie opens with a shot of the beautiful San Jose coast, followed by like three shots in a row of the same blue Mustang. Then we get through the credits and we still see the blue Mustang driving around. So we're gonna spend a lot of this movie, and I mean a lot, watching Rod either drive his blue Mustang somewhere or walk somewhere. In the first 10 minutes of the movie, we have two minutes of credits and three minutes and 42 seconds of him walking or driving. It takes show, don't tell, super literally, and shows us him walking to his car, getting in it, driving, getting to a gas station, putting gas in his car, leaving the gas station, getting stuck in traffic, driving some more, pulling into work, getting out of the car, walking into the building, every single step. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We see Rod walk into a restaurant. Hi! Hi! Couple things. So the first thing you'll notice is the audio for this movie. And it's gonna stay around this quality the whole time. There's a lot of ambient noise that makes it hard to tell what characters are saying. There's a lot of times where the audio will just completely cut out for a second. <laughs> and then come right back. And there'll be times when characters just don't say anything, but do weird pantomime gestures. This is where the bar is for the rest of the movie and it will not move. So he gets his menu, he starts looking at it, and just past the menu, he sees a woman sitting at a different table and he just stares at her for way too long. Everyone's feet in this movie are super loud. You heard it outside with Rod. And now you're hearing it inside with this woman whose name is Natalie. So Rod watches her leave, follows her outside, walks up behind her, and stops her. Excuse me, miss. Yes? I don't mean to bother you. What? I think I know you from somewhere. Really? Yeah, did you go to San Mateo High School? Yeah, how'd you know that? I went there too. So are you from here? Not really. My mother lives up here, but I'm from San Francisco. What about you? San Jose. I remember you now. You were my English class. I was. Yeah, I sat two seats behind you. Oh, I remember now. We had English together. Second period, Mr. Johnson. You would always bring a nice coffee from Starbucks into class. When we read Beloved by Toni Morrison, I would always bring up the turtle sex scene, and you thought that that was weird. You remember now. So they talk a little bit, find out Natalie's a model, and then the conversation ends. The conversation is over. He watches her walk away for a full 10 seconds. And then he chases after her again. Natalie! Oh, hi again. And then Natalie says, oh, hi again. Like they haven't seen each other for a couple days. Not like she just walked to her car and he's coming back to tell her something else. They exchange phone numbers and then the conversation's over for real this time. Rod watches the news brought to you by Exposition, which reveals that a bunch of birds were found dead in San Jose where authorities are investigating the cause of their death. I can understand if you get a bunch of scientists or ecologists or someone in that sort of a field to look and investigate if there's been a massive drop in any animal population. That makes perfect sense. But when you say the authorities are investigating, 
Sounds like you just sent a bunch of cops to go look at a bunch of dead birds. Also, this movie is incredibly blatant with its climate change is killing the world message. The population of polar bears is declining rapidly due to the melting of sea ice in the Arctic. As the sea ice melts, the polar bears are forced to move farther north. Rod gets in his car and gets gas and goes to work. And it takes two and a half minutes. We see Rod go to work as a salesman. And he makes a big sale. Can I place your order today? Great, thanks. We appreciate your business. Woohoo! What's with all the noise? Caught the big fish. Yeah? How big was the sale? One million dollars. Awesome, man! Biggest sale of my career. He makes a million dollar sale and celebrates with his co-worker. We watch Natalie do her modeling gig, and then she gets a phone call from her agent after doing a gig at My Photo, saying that she's gonna be the Victoria's Secret cover girl. Also, I know it's a dumb detail, but I love that her phone's ringer is just a bike bell. Natalie? Hey, Christy, what's up? I have great news for you. Victoria's Secret wants you to become their cover girl model. You're kidding. No, no, it's, it's the real deal. That's great. Yeah, of course I'll do it. Thanks for getting me the gig. It's super clear that they recorded one person's scene and then they recorded the other person's scene and they didn't even try to write dialogue between them. And then they tried to patch the two of them together. You are welcome. You, you worked very hard, so here's your chance to impress them. Congratulations again. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. No. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Thank you again. All right. Okay, bye, Christine. Thanks. Then we see more walking as Rod goes to his car, and he calls up Natalie. Hello? Natalie? Who is this? It's Rod. Oh, the guy from the restaurant. What's up? Hey, it was nice running into you at Half Moon Bay. Yeah, it was nice meeting you. I think this shows how they see each other best. Um, Rod taking it as some reignition of an old crush she used to have in high school, and Natalie seeing it as meeting an entirely new person. Rod talks about his big sale, and Natalie talks about landing the Victoria's Secret gig, to which Rod replies, Wow, congratulations. I think you'll look great in those lingerie. Could have left it at, wow, congratulations. So they're cutting back and forth between the two of them on the phone call. Uh, and then they just throw a dissolve in there, because why the hell not? So how about dinner to celebrate your success? Oh, that was fast. I know a good Vietnamese restaurant. Sounds delicious. I'll see you then. Where and when are they meeting? I know they're going to a Vietnamese restaurant. The only thing I can come up with is that there's only one Vietnamese restaurant in all of San Jose, and they're both gonna be there tonight and hope the other one shows up. But if you Google Vietnamese restaurant in San Jose, 20 of them show up right away. So I know that's not the case. We cut to Rod and his coworker playing basketball, and Rod totally bricks it. Woo, it's killing me. I know, man, what's with this weather? A heat wave in winter? Okay, so it's winter time. I don't know. Let's call it a day. Yeah, I don't know. Let's call it a day. Definitely not because I'm bad at basketball, but because of this wintertime heat. I met this girl Nally over the weekend. Good for you. Is she hot? Yeah, fashion model. This sounds like how two sixth graders think adults talk. Yeah, we're going out this weekend. Oh, they're going out on the weekend. I hope Natalie knows that. Because I sure as hell didn't know that. Anyways, we're just gonna go to lunch. Okay, so we're going out for weekend lunch. We find out that the company that these two work for is about to be bought out by a bigger tech company. You know, if that happens, we'll all be millionaires. And they're gonna be millionaires. We get more exposition news about a wildfire that's burned through 30,000 acres and is 0% contained. So I called my friend John, who's in a fire academy, so I could get an idea of how bad of a fire this is. He said that this would be like if the fire started, 
no one was called in for several days, there was heavy wind all the time, and everyone slept in. I'm pretty sure that this fire is the greatest threat to humanity at this point, not a bunch of birds who we've heard are just dead. Also, there's gonna be a green Grand Prix featuring watermarked footage of race cars. We cut to an establishing shot of a grocery store in LA, and then a restaurant in San Jose. They actually filmed in a restaurant, so why not use that restaurant as your establishing shot? Also, they said they were having lunch, but we can clearly see that the sun is setting, so I'm gonna assume that they're having dinner. So why did you decide to go into sales? I like sales. It fits my personality. It's lifeless and cold and focused solely on numbers. I work at a startup company called NCT Software. Got the stock option. Hopefully, if the company makes it big by being bought out or goes public, I'll exercise that stock option, cash out, and walk away with tons of cash. My Silicon Valley dream. This man has the emotional depth of a teaspoon. They make regular first date small talk, you know, like, why didn't you want to fuck me in high school? So how come you never made a pass at me in school? Blend. Do you want to have kids? So what's your plan? Family? Kids? Real low-key stuff. So after their sunset meal at the Vietnamese restaurant, the two of them go for a daytime walk. And here they come. The stars of the show. The birds are finally here. So after they look at the birds, they go to a club for literally 10 seconds, and then Rod drives Natalie home. That was fun. We should do it again. I'd like to. Good night. See you next week. Can't I come in? Uh, not on the first date. I'm not that kind of girl. She's not that kind of girl. So now we get to meet Natalie's mom, who is both incredibly supportive of her daughter and completely doubts her choice of profession. Oh, uh, how's modeling going? It's great, Mom. I got a job with Victoria's Secret. <gasps> no way! Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, honey, you know, I've always been supportive of your modeling career. It's just such a tough business to be in. Well, listen, if, if things don't work out, it doesn't hurt to have a secure financial husband to support you. Yeah. Or, you know, a real estate career to fall back on. The other thing I love about this scene is that we linger on shots way, 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 way longer than we really need to. But actually, I gotta get going. I just wanted to drop by to say hi to you and to tell you all about my new gig. Well, does the gig pay well? Yes, it does. Oh, that's my girl! <laughs> now we see Rod's co-worker, Rick, getting it on with a lady, Mai, because... A day without sex is a day wasted, man. I find the ImaginePeace.com poster in the background a more compelling piece of character detail than literally anything else in the entire movie. Natalie calls Mai and they realize, oh, we're friends and we're dating two guys who are co-workers who are also friends. We should go on a double date. Everyone already knows each other. It'll be a good time. Hard cut to the office. NCT gets sold to Oracle for a billion dollars. And then we get 10 different shots of applause and each one of them starts the applause all over again. Everyone clears the room to give Rod and Bill, the president of the company, the chance to talk. Rick suddenly has an RC car, and then Rick and Rod talk about wealth and materialism and their upcoming double date. On their double date, they go see an inconvenient truth, because of course they did. And now Mai is wearing an ImaginePeace.com t-shirt. Hey, uh, Mai and I gotta get back to work, so, uh... Hey, we have something to do, so why don't you guys leave this public place? So Rod starts out his early retirement by talking to execs about his new clean energy company. Rod and Natalie go to the Pumpkin Festival, which is on October 13th and 14th, and they went on their date the weekend before that. 
So Rick was complaining about winter time when at the very latest it was October 10th. Is October 10th winter? No, no it's not. At the pumpkin festival, they see a painting that gets absolutely no reaction from Natalie. Oh, lovers on the moon. Yeah. And they just look at pumpkins cause it's a pumpkin festival and what else is there to do but look at pumpkins. After the pumpkin festival, they drive to the beach. And I have to warn you, because this is where the audio gets painful. The sea is so beautiful. So what is your ideal man? Well, for one thing, he has to have a lot of stock options invested. <laughs> At least you're honest. I think she was joking. That sounds like a, a joke. The characters go back and forth on who's revealing themselves to the audience and the other character, and who's just asking a series of questions that don't really go together at all. So what is your ideal man? Is that all? So do you have like a backup plan? You know, if your modeling career doesn't work out? Then Rod gives Natalie the same advice about having a backup plan that her mom gave her. I figure if I don't make it big by the time I'm 30, I figure I'll just take it from there. That is not my cut. That is genuinely how the movie was made. After stopping to stare at the two dead bird PNGs for a little bit, Natalie brings Rod over to meet her mom. Rod, Nat tells me that you are a very successful salesman. She did, huh? I am very passionate about my career. So Natalie tells me you recently retired. Yes, I did, and she mentioned that you were going to take an early retirement. Yeah, a few months. Just taking a little break. Oh, so you're starting a business. Yeah, you know, it's still in its early stages, but I'm trying to get it off the ground. Oh, okay. So you're not retiring. No, no, I am. But you've started a business. Yeah, I did, but like I said, it's in the early stages, so I'm starting a business while I'm retiring. You can't both be starting a business and be retired. We get a whole bunch of backstory on Natalie's mom, where she used to work, what she's up to now, and this is the last time she's ever in the movie. You know, Rod, I was just kidding about the stock options and shopping and money and all that. Only one is you. Are you sure? It sounds like he was about to break up with her. And then after hearing her say that, he's like, oh, are you sure you, you, sure you want to be together? Oh, man. Well, this is going to hurt a lot more now. Then we get an absolute banger of a song where the singer's lips just don't match the words he's saying. Go. Rod dances like a robot who has observed 10,000 hours of dad dancing. Having a sense of party. Young ladies are doing their makeup and the brothers can't wait to hook up. He's hanging out with his family and the guys can't wait to hook up. That's no good. That's not good. Then Rod says something and whatever he said is lost to time because we'll never know. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, we're 45 minutes in, we're halfway through, and there's no sign of a birdemic at this point. So Rod and Natalie go home, and it looks like sexy time is about to happen. Rod, what do you think? I think he likes your feet the best. I think the camera likes her feet the best too. And then we get eight shots of the town looking perfectly normal, you know, nothing bad happening here, and then we fade to black. You know how I warned you about the audio earlier? 
That was baby preschool time. Now we're getting to big league cochlea damage. <laughs> The birds start dive bombing the shit out of San Jose. And they're using so much force that they're not just causing damage, they're causing explosions. They're going to be using this same bird sound through the entire rest of the movie. So don't think that you can get away from it at all. The birds are outside of Rod and Natalie's place. Rod picks up his iPhone, looks at it, puts it to his ear, and then says, Battery's dead. Rob, they're breaking in through the window. Rob, they're breaking in through the window. Or someone is crushing a water bottle just off camera to make it sound like birds are breaking in through the window. Surely no birds will fly through the top half of the window. They get dressed and they run outside looking for other people so that they can group up and survive the birds together. They run into Ramsey because all the main men in this movie need to have our names and girlfriend Becky because men can exist. Women need a qualifier. We try to drive away, but I can't find my car keys. I lost them somewhere. He lost the keys to the blue Mustang. It's the end of an era. How am I only 50 minutes into this movie? Use these two. Here you go. I'm gonna go with hit. I don't know what, uh, what word they didn't allow him to say there, but I'm gonna go with hit. The door's stuck. The door's stuck. I can't, I can't get in. It's, it's locked. It's jammed. I can't get in. They finally get into Ramsey's car and drive away. Ramsey switches into shotgun, pulls out a big ass gun, and starts blasting away at these birds. And just like the bird noises, the gun sounds are the same every time and way louder than literally everything else in the scene. They're driving and they see some cars on the side of the road, so they pull over to try and investigate. They're dead! <laughs> oh no, there's a baby! You gotta save the baby! Oh. Oh, the kid's like seven or eight. Well, I guess you can save them. <laughs> Got one. Every time they kill a bird, it's the scene is happening, the scene is happening, hard cut, bird falling out of the sky, back to the scene happening right where we left it. They save the two kids and they're hungry, so they go to find a convenience store to get some food. So they're at the store, raiding it for supplies, um, and Ramsey's keeping guard. He tells them that they gotta go, and we see that Natalie was just looking at champagne. So they take their convenience store sandwiches and decide that they're gonna go have lunch on the beach. They see an old guy on a bridge who's wearing a mask. So he must be a psychic. What the hell are you doing? Hey, hey, stand back! These birds are contagious now, go away! Hey, get away from me, you! Get away! The way that they approach him is just straight out of The Shining. It's so creepy. Hey, I thought I told you to stand back. These birds are contaminated. They have bird flu virus. Now go away. Uh, can we just talk about it at, at the picnic area? You wanna talk? Okay, all right. Oh, you wanna talk? Yeah, that's fine. I thought you were gonna come over here and start pissing all over me. The last time I let someone get close, they put out their wieners and just started whizzing all over. <laughs>
guys, uh, this is Dr. Jones. Indiana Jones? Sir, don't you know that these birds are attacking people? These birds? Yes. No way, they're dead from the uh, bird flu virus. How could these birds be attacking if they're dead? They're so clearly talking about two different sets of birds. Because clearly the dead birds aren't the ones attacking. How would they attack if they're dead? Unless there's zombie birds now. That's a whole other nightmare that we gotta live through. No way, they're dead from the uh, bird flu virus. How do you know this? I just tested their blood. Then why are they attacking us? Then how are they attacking you? You hear dead bird attacks and you want to know their emotional backstory? Jones gives an impassioned speech about the need to save the environment. So if they attack me, I got a little present for them. Dr. Jones stays fucking strapped. Well, you certainly know a lot about birds. Yeah, I'm a bird scientist. It's literally my job. So the gang drives off away from Dr. Jones and we see Rod and Ramsey talking in a car. They explain that the women are off I'm taking a shit and that Ramsey is pretty good at shitting. How come you're still on the Marines? I just got tired of all the fucking killing in Iraq. Why can't we just give peace a chance? And just like that, Ramsey ended all wars. While she's getting ready to go take a poop, Becky gets attacked and killed. She wasn't even pooping yet. She was just squatting with her pants still fully on. Natalie runs back to the car to tell Ramsey and Rod that Becky is dead. Ramsey goes, what do you mean she's dead? Runs out, finds her corpse and goes, oh, so that's what she meant by dead. And then he runs right back to the car. They find a bus full of people who Ramsey so desperately wants to save, despite the people on the bus not wanting to leave the bus. Ramsey and Rod pull up and start shooting at the birds, but if they ever miss, and they miss pretty often, they could just hit one of the people on the bus. The people clearly don't want to leave, but Ramsey forces them to get off the bus. Here's the grossest scene coming up. They go outside, and then I guess Ramsey shoots one of them who's too close. <laughs> Bird guts and goop explode all over the people. It's so gross. And while Ramsey and the three people he forcibly removed from the bus are just covered in guck, the birds come and kill all four of them. It's really hard to care about the deaths of these people when the god-awful bird squawking is happening the entire time. Rod says, I'm going to save them. And Natalie says, you can't save a dead person. So Rod stays in the car and they drive away. They go to a gas station and Rod reveals that Joe Walsh and Don Henley killed Becky and Ramsey. Hi, the Eagles killed our friends. Uh, do you have a phone I could use to call the police? What would calling the police do? You know that no crime was committed. So you would call them and then say that a bird killed your friend. And what, what are they gonna do, arrest a bird? Well, we need some gas. Well, you know, from the eagle attack, we are short on gas, but it's $100 a gallon if you want. What, $100? That's outrageous. $100? That's outrageous. I know I just became a multimillionaire who owns his own company, but I can't afford that. Also, I just think it's funny that it's an apocalyptic scenario and he's still using a credit card. They get some candy, they get some water, they get some gas, and right as they're getting out of there, the birds blow up the gas station. They drive off and see someone pulled over on the side of the road, so they decide they're gonna try and help him out. We can give you a ride. She just didn't say that. When the guy on the side of the road pulls a gun on them, Natalie looks way more exasperated than threatened. It's one of those moments where it's like, yeah, this might as well happen. So while being threatened by the guy, Rod gets out of the car, goes to the trunk, and gets a jerry can out. And then the guy who was robbing them gets insta-killed by a bird. And instead of getting the gas that they desperately need and paid $100 for that no one is guarding anymore, they just drive away. They drive into a forest to get some fresh water, and while they're there, they're being watched by a man of the woods. Why are you hiding in the trees? Well, this is my home. I live here. That's my house.
Oh, he's an Ewok. So can we play in your trails? Sure. Yes, that'll be fun. No way, it's too dangerous. The Eagles might come there. Another brilliant line reading. They run back to their car and while they're running, a forest fire starts. So what's the guy who lives to protect the trees gonna do? They leave the forest, get back on the road, and while they're driving, they spot a lighthouse, which apparently is where Mai lives, because she continues to be way more interesting than anyone else in this movie. Unfortunately, we see that Rick and Mai are dead. Oh God, Mai, Mai, are you okay? Mai. 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 God. Mai says something to Natalie with her dying breath, but good luck figuring that shit out. They drive off until they run out of gas. All I'm saying is they should have grabbed that jerry can. They find a fishing rod and a stove in the trunk of the car. So they go to the ocean to try and fish out a meal for the kids. Hold on, if his name's Rod and he's fishing, they sit down to eat, the kids complain that they want Happy Meals, and then the birds come to attack. Or do they? They do. Everyone piles into the car that has no gas, and the eagles surround them. They decide that a tire iron and a jerry can are their best weapons. A bird crashes through the windshield and cracks it, and they think they're about to get got when a bunch of doves come and fly all the eagles away. Look, they're leaving. They watch all the birds fly away. They walk down to the beach. The music swells. And then Natalie says, I wonder why they stopped attacking. Oh, I wonder why they stopped attacking. I guess I wonder that too. Roll credits. So I guess the moral of this movie is don't be mean to birds. I've watched this movie like four times in the last week and I know I'm gonna watch it again. I can't seem to quit it. And maybe, maybe that's just what the pandemic has done to me. There's also a sequel to this movie. Uh, so I will be watching that eventually and maybe making a sequel to this video. The director also tried to do a Kickstarter for the third in the series. He had a goal of $500,000 and he raised 596. So unfortunately, it's not the trilogy we all want it to be. But regardless, Birdemic is a watershed film, speaks to its moment in a way that few films do, and is just terrible. Thank you so much for watching. This is the most disingenuous part of the video where I tell you to do things that will make an algorithm happy so that I get more dopamine when more people watch my video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to my channel. And if you made it all this way, I really appreciate it because wow, this is a long video and a long movie. Thanks for sticking it out. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.